Hello, I'm Dan Klimek with Siskin Company, and our safety meeting today is going to be a quick overview of slings and rigging. Now, this topic is pretty complex, and so what I'm going to touch on today are just several highlights. You will need to get more information about a lot of the details of the things we're going to talk about from your employer. When we look at slings and rigging, it's important that employees be trained in the proper use and the limitations and care of the slings that they operate or that they use. And the other thing is, when it comes to doing lifting, there's a requirement by OSHA that employers have standard hand signals on the various jobs. So you need to make sure that you have training and that you know what those hand signals are when you're working with others and doing lifting and those things. Those are excellent topics to cover during your JSAs. What I'm going to touch on today are several slings, the chain sling, the wire rope sling, and the synthetic sling, and just give a couple of, of quick pointers on each one of these on some of the things that I see when I'm out in the field and the kinds of issues that I see with these various, various products. When we look at slings, it's important that you inspect the sling daily before and before use, and depending on what you're doing with it, you actually may have to inspect the sling more frequently than daily if you're subjecting it to pretty severe service. If a sling is damaged, you want to remove it from service. You are most likely not going to be able to make a field repair to a sling and actually have, this, have the repair fit the requirements of the manufacturer and of OSHA. With alloy chain slings, you always want to put the load on them fairly gently. Chains are a very tough sling. They, they have a lot of use, a lot of durability, but they don't handle shock loading very well. You need to make sure that the chain sling has a tag on it that states what the, what the, the capacity, the grade of the chain, and that the, who the sling manufacturer is. And all attachment points have to fit that same kind of requirement. If you look at an alloy chain sling, and you'll notice I'm talking about an alloy chain. A chain that is used for lifting or a sling that's made out of, out of chain needs to be alloy. You cannot use the proof coil kinds of chain for a sling. It needs to be an alloy chain. And an alloy chain is always going to be marked with the, with the manufacturer someplace on every link. The, uh, if you're going to be using different attachments, the attachments need to be rated the same as the sling and they need to be used correctly. So on this slide you can see that, that you've got a shackle one of them has the correct shackle bolt in it. The other one has a makeshift bolt. You need to use the equipment as it's designed, and, and the equipment cannot be deformed or otherwise damaged. When we start looking at chain wear, one of the things you want to do is inspect it for excessive wear for cracking or pitting. In the picture here, you'll see an alloy chain that has a non-alloy repair link put in it. This is incorrect that chain needs to be pulled out of service. When we start looking at wire rope, wire rope is used all over. And if it's used as a sling for lifting, there are different requirements than if that wire rope is used just as a general cable to pull things or, or any other type of use that you might have in the oil patch. So when, we look, when we're looking at chain slings, we need to consider things like the attachment points, how the chain, how the sling is made. And in this particular uh, slide, you can see that there are U-bolts being used. OSHA really doesn't like to see U-bolts being used on a sling. They can be used. There are special requirements. Check the OSHA guidance on what you can use if you're going to fabricate slings. You need to inspect the sling and remove from service. You can see the kind of damage here. You can see these other examples of damage to slings. And if you have slings that look like this, they need to be removed. Synthetic web slings are what most everybody uses in the oil patch. So there needs to be a label on them that shows the manufacturer, the rated capacities, and the type of material. If there's any attachments on it, the attachments are normally put in at the time of manufacture and they need to fit the rated capacity of the sling. 
The stitching is the only way that these slings can be pulled, put together. So again, it's not a field repair. You never want to tie knots. You never want to, you know, put rivets or bolts or something else in them. The slings are stitched and they're, they're put together by the manufacturer in that way. You remove the sling from service if you start to see burns, if there's other kinds of damage, if you start seeing worn stitches or broken stitches, or if there's distortion of any of the fittings. So when it comes to using slings, you want to try to pad corners because any sharp corner will damage a sling. If you put padding on it, it'll tend to extend the life of the sling. You want to lift and lower loads slowly because you don't want to have a shock load on it. You want to understand the capacity of the sling and understand that the sling angle you use changes the capacity that that sling can handle. And you always want to know how much weight you're actually lifting. You do not want to use knots and you don't want to jerk loads. So in review, the things that we want to talk about is care for your slings. Treat them as a tool that really requires care and inspection. You always want to inspect them before use. Discard any kind of damaged slings or somehow take them out of service. Don't just put them aside and figure, well, I can use them for something later. Get rid of them because a damaged sling is likely to cause an injury and, and, or an accident and hurt somebody. And you always want to follow manufacturers and OSHA guidance when it comes to the use and inspection of slings. This presentation is available at www.gomsea.org.